Chapter 9 The Most Confidential Knowledge The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. Those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. And yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, I am not a part of this cosmic manifestation, for myself is the very source of creation. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere, rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, all material manifestations enter into my nature, and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I create them again. The whole cosmic order is under me. Under my will it is automatically manifested again and again, and under my will it is annihilated at the end. O Dhananjaya, all this work cannot bind me. I am ever detached from all these material activities, seated as though neutral. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the Supreme Lord of all that be. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demoniac and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruitive activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Others who engage in sacrifice by the cultivation of knowledge worship the Supreme Lord as the one without a second, as diverse in many, and in the universal form. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter, and the fire, and the offering. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the purifier, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rig, the Sama, and the Yajra Vedas. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal seed. O Arjuna, I give heat, and I withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality, and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth on the pious heavenly planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. When they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure, and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti 
but they do so in a wrong way. I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings, and those who worship me will live with me. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. In this way you will be freed from bondage to work and its auspicious and inauspicious results. With your mind fixed on me in this principle of renunciation, you will be liberated and come to me. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he has to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. O son of Pritha, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, vaishas, merchants, and sudras, workers, can attain the supreme destination how much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas, the devotees, and the saintly kings. Therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Chapter 10 The Opulence of the Absolute The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Listen again, O mighty armed Arjuna. Because you are my dear friend, for your benefit I shall speak to you further, giving knowledge that is better than what I have already explained. Neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences, for in every respect I am the source of the demigods and sages. He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme Lord of all the worlds, he only, undiluted among men, is freed from all sins. Intelligence, knowledge, freedom from doubt and delusion, forgiveness, truthfulness, control of the senses, control of the mind, happiness and distress, birth, death, fear, fearlessness, non-violence, equanimity, satisfaction, austerity, charity, fame, and infamy. All these various qualities of living beings are created by me alone. The seven great sages and before them the four other great sages and the Manus, progenitors of mankind, come from me, born from my mind, and all living beings populating the various planets descend from them. One who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mine engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Arjuna said, You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest, all the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyas confirm this truth about you, 
and now you yourself are declaring it to me. O Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Neither the demigods nor the demons, O Lord, can understand your personality. Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency, O Supreme Person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. Please tell me in detail of your divine opulences by which you pervade all these worlds. O Krishna, O Supreme Mystic, how shall I constantly think of you, and how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered, O Supreme Personality of Godhead? O Janardana, please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you, for the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjun, for my opulence is limitless. I am the Supersoul, O Arjun, seated in the hearts of all living entities. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all beings. Of the Adichas I am Vishnu, of lights I am the radiant sun, of the Maruts I am Marichi, and among stars I am the moon. Of the Vedas I am the Samaveda, of the demigods I am Indra, the king of heaven. Of the senses I am the mind, and in living beings I am the living force, consciousness. Of all the Rudras I am Lord Shiva, of the Yakshas and the Rakshashas I am the Lord of Wealth, Kuvera, of the Vasus I am Fire, Agni, and of mountains I am Meru. Of priests, O Arjuna, know me to be the chief, Brihaspati, of generals I am Kartikeya, and of bodies of water I am the ocean. Of the great sages I am Brigu, of vibrations I am the transcendental Om, of sacrifices I am the chanting of the holy names, Japa, and of immovable things I am the Himalayas. Of all trees I am the banyan tree, and of the sages among the demigods I am Narada. Of the Gandharvas I am Chitraratha, and among perfected beings I am the sage Kapila. Of horses know me to be Uchaishrava, produced during the churning of the ocean for nectar. Of lordly elephants I am Airavata, and among men I am the monarch. Of weapons I am the thunderbolt, among cows I am the surabi. Of causes for procreation I am Kandarpa, the god of love, and of serpents I am Vasuki. Of the many hooded Nagas I am Ananta, and among aquatics I am the demigod Varuna. Of departed ancestors I am Aryama, and among the dispensers of law I am Yama, the lord of death. Among the Daitya demons I am the devoted Prahlad, among subduers I am time, among beasts I am the lion, and among birds I am Garuda. Of purifiers I am the wind, of the wielders of weapons I am Rama, of fishes I am the shark, and of flowing rivers I am the Ganges. Of all creations I am the beginning and the end and also the middle, O Arjun. Of all sciences I am the spiritual science of the self, and among logicians I am the conclusive truth. Of letters I am the letter A, and among compound words I am the dual compound. I am also inexhaustible time, and of creators I am Brahma. I am all devouring death, and I am the generating principle of all that is yet to be. Among women I am fame, fortune, fine speech, memory, intelligence, steadfastness, and patience. Of hymns in the Sama Veda I am the Brihat Sama, and of poetry I am the Gayatri. Of months, I am Marga Shirsha, November, December, and of seasons, I am flower-bearing spring. I am also the gambling of cheats, and of the splendid, I am the splendor. I am victory, I am adventure, I am the strength of the strong. Of the descendants of Vrishni, I am Vasudev, and of the Pandavas, I am Arjun. Of the sages, I am Vyas, and among great thinkers, I am Ushana. Among all means of suppressing lawlessness, I am punishment, and of those who seek victory, I am morality. Of secret things, I am silence, and of the wise, I am wisdom. Furthermore, O Arjun, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being, moving or non-moving, that can exist without me. O mighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. 
What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. Know that all opulent, beautiful, and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. But what need is there, Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire universe. Chapter 11 The Universal Form Arjuna said, By my hearing the instructions you have kindly given me about these most confidential spiritual subjects, my illusion has now been dispelled. O Lotus-Eyed One, I have heard from you in detail about the appearance and disappearance of every living entity and have realized your inexhaustible glories. O greatest of all personalities, O Supreme Form, Though I see you here before me, in your actual position, as you have described yourself, I wish to see how you have entered into this cosmic manifestation. I want to see that form of yours. If you think that I am able to behold your cosmic form, O my Lord, O Master of all mystic power, then kindly show me that unlimited universal self. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, O son of Pritha, See now my opulences, hundreds of thousands of varied divine and multicolored forms. O best of the Bharatas, see here the different manifestations of Adityas, Vasus, Rudras, Ashvini Kumars, and all the other demigods. Behold the many wonderful things which no one has ever seen or heard of before. O Arjuna, whatever you wish to see, behold at once in this body of mine. This universal form can show you whatever you now desire to see and whatever you may want to see in the future. Everything moving and non-moving is here completely in one place. But you cannot see me with your present eyes. Therefore I give you divine eyes. Behold my mystic opulence. Sanjaya said, O king, having spoken thus, the supreme lord of all mystic power, the personality of Godhead, displayed his universal form to Arjuna. Arjuna saw in that universal form unlimited mouths, unlimited eyes, unlimited wonderful visions. The form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many divine upraised weapons. He wore celestial garlands and garments and many divine scents were smeared all over his body. All was wondrous, brilliant, unlimited, all expanding. If hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise at once into the sky, their radiance might resemble the effulgence of the Supreme Person in that universal form. At that time Arjuna could see in the universal form of the Lord the unlimited expansions of the universe situated in one place, although divided into many, many thousands. Then bewildered and astonished, his hair standing on end, Arjuna bowed his head to offer obeisances, and with folded hands began to pray to the Supreme Lord. Arjuna said, My dear Lord Krishna, I see assembled in your body all the demigods and various other living entities. I see Brahma sitting on the lotus flower, as well as Lord Shiva and all the sages and divine serpents. O Lord of the universe, O universal form, I see in your body many, many arms, bellies, mouths, and eyes, expanded everywhere without limit. I see in you no end, no middle, and no beginning. Your form is difficult to see because of its glaring effulgence, spreading on all sides like blazing fire or the immeasurable radiance of the sun. Yet I see this glowing form everywhere, adorned with various crowns, clubs, and discs. You are the supreme primal objective. You are the ultimate resting place of all this universe. You are inexhaustible, and you are the oldest. You are the maintainer of the eternal religion, the personality of Godhead. This is my opinion. You are without origin, middle, or end. Your glory is unlimited. You have numberless arms, and the sun and moon are your eyes. I see you with blazing fire coming forth from your mouth, burning this entire universe by your own radiance. Although you are one, you spread throughout the sky and the planets and all space between. O oh, Great One, seeing this wondrous and terrible form, all the planetary systems are perturbed. 
All the hosts of demigods are surrendering before you and entering into you. Some of them, very much afraid, are offering prayers with folded hands. Hosts of great sages and perfected beings crying, All peace! are praying to you by singing the Vedic hymns. All the various manifestations of Lord Shiva, the Adichas, the Vasus, the Sadhyas, the Vishvadevas, the two Ashvis, the Maruts, the Forefathers, the Gandharvas, the Yakshas, the Asuras, and the perfected demigods are beholding you in wonder. O mighty armed one, all the planets with their demigods are disturbed at seeing your great form with its many faces, eyes, arms, thighs, legs, and bellies, and your many terrible teeth, as they are disturbed, so am I. O all-pervading Vishnu, seeing you with your many radiant colors touching the sky, your gaping mouths, and your great glowing eyes, my mind is perturbed by fear. I can no longer maintain my steadiness or equilibrium of mind. O Lord of Lords, O Refuge of the Worlds, please be gracious to me. I cannot keep my balance seeing your blazing death-like faces and awful teeth. In all directions I am bewildered. All the sons of Dhritarashtra, along with their allied kings, and Bhishma, Drona, Karna, and our chief soldiers also, are all rushing into your fearful mouths, and some I see trapped with heads smashed between your teeth. As the many waves of the river flow into the ocean, so do all these great warriors enter, blazing into your mouths. I see all people rushing full speed into your mouths, as moths dash to destruction in a blazing fire. O Vishnu, I see you devouring all people from all sides with your flaming mouths, covering all the universe with your effulgence. You are manifest with terrible, scorching rays. O Lord of Lords, so fierce of form, please tell me who you are. I offer my obeisances unto you. Please be gracious to me. You are the primal Lord. I want to know about you, for I do not know what your mission is. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Time I am, the great destroyer of the worlds, and I have come here to destroy all people, with the exception of you, the Pandavas, all the soldiers here on both sides will be slain. Therefore get up, prepare to fight and win glory, conquer your enemies, and enjoy a flourishing kingdom. They are already put to death by my arrangement, and you, O Savyasachi, can be but an instrument in the fight. Drona, Bhishma, Jayadratha, Karna, and the other great warriors have already been destroyed by me. Therefore kill them, and do not be disturbed. Simply fight, and you will vanquish your enemies in battle. Sanjaya said to Dhritarashtra, O king, after hearing these words from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the trembling Arjuna offered obeisances with folded hands again and again. He fearfully spoke to Lord Krishna in a faltering voice as follows. Arjuna said, O master of the senses, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respectful homage, the demons are afraid, and they flee here and there. All this is rightly done. O Great One, greater even than Brahma, you are the original creator. Why then should they not offer their respectful obeisances unto you? O Limitless One, God of Gods, refuge of the universe, you are the invincible source the cause of all causes, transcendental to this material manifestation. You are the original personality of Godhead, the oldest, the ultimate sanctuary of this manifested cosmic world. You are the knower of everything, and you are all that is knowable. You are the supreme refuge above the material modes. O limitless form, this whole cosmic manifestation is pervaded by you. You are the air, and you are the supreme controller. You are fire, you are water, and you are the moon. You are Brahma, the first living creature, and you are the great grandfather. I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you a thousand times, and again, and yet again. Obeisances to you from the front, from behind, and from all sides. O unbounded power, you are the master of limitless might. You are all-pervading, and thus you are everything. 
Thinking of you as my friend, I have rashly addressed you, O Krishna, O Yadava, O my friend, not knowing your glories. Please forgive whatever I may have done in madness or in love. I have dishonored you many times, jesting as we relaxed, lay on the same bed or sat or ate together, sometimes alone and sometimes in front of many friends. O infallible one, please excuse me for all those offenses. You are the father of this complete cosmic manifestation, of the moving and the non-moving. You are its worshipable chief, the supreme spiritual master. No one is equal to you, nor can anyone be one with you. How then could there be anyone greater than you within the three worlds, O Lord of immeasurable power? You are the Supreme Lord, to be worshipped by every living being. Thus I fall down to offer you my respectful obeisances and ask your mercy. As a father tolerates the impudence of his son, or a friend tolerates the impertinence of a friend, or a wife tolerates the familiarity of her partner, please tolerate the wrongs I may have done you. After seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before, I am gladdened, but at the same time my mind is disturbed with fear. Therefore, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of Godhead, O Lord of Lords, O Abode of the Universe. O universal form, O thousand-armed Lord, I, I wish to see you in your four-armed form, with helmeted head and with club, wheel, conch, and lotus flower in your hands. I long to see you in that form. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjun, happily have I shown you by my internal potency this supreme universal form within the material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of glaring effulgence. O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mine, for neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances, can I be seen in this form in the material world. You have been perturbed and bewildered by seeing this horrible feature of mine. Now let it be finished. My devotee, be free again from all disturbances. With a peaceful mind, you can now see the form you desire. Sanjaya said to Dhritarashtra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, having spoken thus to Arjuna, displayed his real four-armed form and at last showed his two-armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. When Arjuna saw Krishna in his original form, he said, O oh, Janardana, seeing this human-like form so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind and I am restored to my original nature. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjun, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form which is so dear. The form you are seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing serious penances, nor by charity, nor by worship. It is not by these means that one can see me as I am. My dear Arjuna, only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. My dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and mental speculation, he who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living being, he certainly comes to me. Chapter 12 Devotional Service Arjuna inquired, Which are considered to be more perfect, those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service, or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of the senses, 
the all-pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. For those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested, impersonal feature of the Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotional service, and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live in me, always, without a doubt. My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way develop a desire to attain me. If you cannot practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then just try to work for me, because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage. If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation, and better than meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action, for by such renunciation one can attain peace of mind. One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. He for whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anyone, who is equiposed in happiness and distress, fear and anxiety, is very dear to me. My devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without cares, free from all pain and not striving for some result, is very dear to me. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, who neither laments nor desires, and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things, such a devotee is very dear to me. One who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipoised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything, who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and who is engaged in devotional service, such a person is very dear to me. Those who follow this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal, are very, very dear to me. Chapter 13 Nature, the Enjoyer, and Consciousness Arjuna said, O my dear Krishna, I wish to know about Prakriti, nature, Purusha, the enjoyer, and the field and the knower of the field, and of knowledge and the object of knowledge. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, This body, O son of Kunti, is called the field, and one who knows this body is called the knower of the field. O sign of Bharta, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies, and to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Now please hear my brief description of this field of activity and how it is constituted, what its changes are, whence it is produced, who that knower of the field of activities is, and what his influences are. That knowledge of the field of activities and of the knower of activities is described by various sages in various Vedic writings. 
It is especially presented in Vedanta Sutra with all reasoning as to cause and effect. The five great elements, false ego, intelligence, the unmanifested, the ten senses and the mind, the five sense objects, desire, hatred, happiness, distress, the aggregate, the life symptoms, and convictions. All these are considered in summary to be the field of activities and its interactions. Humility, pridelessness, non-violence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age and disease, detachment, freedom from entanglement with children, wife, home and the rest, even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization, and philosophical search for the absolute truth, all these I declare to be knowledge. And besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. I shall now explain the knowable, knowing which you will taste the eternal. Brahman, the spirit, beginningless and subordinate to me, lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world. Everywhere are his hands and legs, his eyes, heads and faces, and he has ears everywhere. And in this way the Supersoul exists, pervading everything. The Supersoul is the original source of all senses, yet he is without senses. He is unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. He transcends the modes of nature, and at the same time he is the master of all the modes of material nature. The Supreme Truth exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and the non-moving. Because he is subtle, he is beyond the power of the material senses to see or to know. Although far, far away, he is also near to all. Although the Supersoul appears to be divided among beings, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. He is knowledge. He is the object of knowledge and he is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. Thus the field of activities, the body, knowledge and the knowable have been summarily described by me. Only my devotees can understand this thoroughly and thus attain to my nature. Material nature and the living entities should be understood to be beginningless. Their transformations and the modes of matter are products of material nature. Nature is said to be the cause of all material causes and effects, whereas the living entity is the cause of the various sufferings and enjoyments in this world. The living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil among various species. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the Supersoul. One who understands this philosophy concerning material nature, the living entity, and the interaction of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. Some perceive the Supersoul within themselves through meditation, others through the cultivation of knowledge, and still others through working without fruitive desires. Again, there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person upon hearing about Him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. O Chief of the Bhartas, know that whatever you see in existence, both the moving and the non-moving, is only a combination of the field of activities and the knower of the field. 
one who sees the super soul accompanying the individual soul in all bodies and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul within the destructible body is ever destroyed actually sees one who sees the super soul equally present everywhere in every living being does not degrade himself by his mind thus he approaches the transcendental destination one who can see that all activities are performed by the body which is created of material nature and sees that the self does nothing actually sees when a sensible man ceases to see different identities due to different material bodies and he sees how beings are expanded everywhere he attains to the brahman conception those with the vision of eternity can see that the imperishable soul is transcendental eternal and beyond the modes of nature despite contact with the material body o arjuna the soul neither does anything nor is entangled the sky due to its subtle nature does not mix with anything although it is all pervading similarly the soul situated in brahman vision does not mix with the body though situated in that body o son of bharata as the sun alone illuminates all this universe so does the living entity one within the body illuminate the entire body by consciousness those who see with eyes of knowledge the difference between the body and the knower of the body and can also understand the process of liberation from bondage in material nature attain to the supreme goal